Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. A hot and humid start to the weekend, and it's going to stay that way all weekend long. You're going to need the air conditioning for the next 48 hours because it's going to stay sticky outside. Let's get right on over to Brett with what we can expect this weekend. Hi, Brett. Yeah, water is going to be your best friend this weekend. Make sure that you're drinking plenty of it if you're going to be outside. It's going to feel like the mid-90s with the humidity that we have in place. Uh, earlier today, we had a couple of spotty showers dot the map. We may see one or two of those tomorrow, but most, if not all, stay dry. And the chances do get better as we head into next week. We'll talk about that system in just a bit. Skies have kind of cleared out a bit. Temps are in the 70s, but that bottom number, that's the important one. Low to mid-70 dew points feels very muggy out there, and it's not going to go anywhere anytime soon. Topping out near 90 tomorrow, feeling like the mid-90s with the humidity we will do a touch better on Sunday, but the increased chance for showers and thunderstorms is back in the forecast. We'll talk timing on that and talk about when that dry air finally returns coming up in just a bit. Hey, Brett, thank you. After a two year hiatus because of the pandemic, the ever popular Dearborn homecoming is back this weekend and in a new location with even more attractions. So good for everybody to get together and Mara McDonald is at the Het festival tonight and Mara, this has been a mainstay for decades. So the funny thing about all of this is that my dad has always referred to my TV makeup as the remarkable transformation. So I guess this is sort of the double remarkable transformation that Sonia is um, putting on here. She asked me if I wanted glitter and I looked at her. I'm like, is that even a question? This is one of the most popular spots at Dearborn Homecoming, but let me show you the rest. <laughs> Gratitude, it's what's on everybody's mind tonight. City seems to be back alive after the very bad pandemic, right? So yet we're still in a pandemic, but this is great times. Look at his family is fun. It's no, no, nothing but love here, it feels like. For 41 years, Dearborn's homecoming has been a summer staple, but for the last two, nothing. This year, it's back. <laughs> with a location change and more of everything. We gather together to be one community, to help our community to be safe, and God bless the mayor for this opportunity to be union, to be strong. I love Dearborn, I love the cameraman, I love Channel 4. I really appreciate your hard work. Back at you, Ali. The new location is in the lot and surrounding area of the Ford Community and Performing Arts Center. And if you have mobility issues, don't worry. This event is staffed to the gills with eager volunteers who will help ferry you around. Well, I'm a lifeguard for the city of Dearborn, and they told us that it would be nice to volunteer and help out for the festival. And the food options are truly endless. Everything from lobster to fresh lemonade. How's the lemonade? It's amazing. I actually thanked her for making mine. I was like, you made this. Like, you put your love and care into this. It's really good. <laughs> I have it on excellent authority that these fried Oreos are indeed divine and that the city chicken in the Polish tent is especially good this year. We're in Dearborn. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. Love it, Mara. Thank you so much. An update now from the state on the chemical spill in the Huron River. Test results are back from two samples taken from Hubble Pond in Milford. The samples showed a low level of hexavalent chromium below levels that would be toxic to marine life. The health department still recommends people stay out of the Huron River between North Wixom Road in Oakland County and Kensington Road in Livingston County. Now to an update on a Detroit man arrested in dramatic fashion earlier this week by Detroit police with the help of Southfield PD. James Kimball of Detroit is charged with first degree murder for deliberately running over Lamar Waller on July 12th. Police say Kimball and Waller got into an argument outside their cars before Kimball got into his car and then accelerated into Waller. Earlier this week, we showed you this police video of Kimball's arrest in Southfield. Officers used a pit maneuver to stop the car he was in then had to chase him down on foot. Kimball is due back in court two weeks from now. A teenager who escaped from East Point police custody earlier this week faced a judge today, and so did his mother. 18-year-old Devante Moore 
was caught during a traffic stop Thursday night, two days after he escaped while putting being put in a transport van. Police say when they arrested him, or I should say re-arrested him, Moore was hiding in the back of a car driven by his mother, who's also facing charges related to helping him after his escape. The judge today issued Moore a $100,000 cash bond. The ongoing search to find the body of missing 17-year-old Zion Foster is now into its ninth week. Sky 4 was over the Pine Tree Acres landfill in Lenox Township today. That's where police believe her body is buried after her cousin admitted to putting her body in a Detroit dumpster. The search for her body started back on May 31st. So far, crews have dug between 25 to 28 feet. Police believe her body could be buried at least 75 to 100 feet deep beneath the surface. Mel Pearson is finished as head hockey coach at the University of Michigan. The school confirmed today it will not renew Pearson's contract, which expired in April when last season ended. An investigation found Pearson fostered a toxic culture within the club, including retaliation against players for speaking up, allowing women within the program to be harassed and encouraging players to lie about COVID contact tracing. Pearson had been the Wolverines head coach since 2017. No replacement has yet been named. The Girl Scouts are much more than just wonderful, delicious cookies. It's about gaining experience and learning lessons. And sometimes those are life lessons that can help others. And that's exactly uh, why Jason Colthorpe is at uh, in a school tonight in Macomb County. And he joins us live with more. Yeah, hey, Kim, we're at Ojibwa Elementary, and uh, earlier tonight we asked uh, three of the girls who helped build this food pantry why they became Girl Scouts, and one of them said to meet new friends, and another said because of all the fun activities, and the other said to help people, and that's exactly what this does. This is the food pantry. Elizabeth, Tessa, and Eleanor are just half of the Junior Girl Scouts troop 76580. This is the nighttime side. It has each of our names under a star, and we have a troop tent. They're showing off what they built to earn their bronze award. There's a bunch of stuff that you can choose from. The girls came up with the idea to build a food pantry on a camping trip. They learned how to build and use their hands and use tools that um, a lot of kids their age don't get so to do. We had to just build it completely from scratch and we painted it and like we had to saw down the wood to size, put on the shingles. They loved it. They had a lot of fun doing it. Well, there was at least one thing that wasn't fun. Sanding, definitely sanding. It makes your arms hurt really badly. Yeah, yeah. Troop leader Jim Devley Shower says someone donated a kitchen cabinet to help, but they bought the rest of the materials with money from cookie sales. And besides getting their bronze awards, the girls wanted to help others. So we're hoping it's uh, going to be a self-sustaining food pantry. So uh, people in the community will hopefully will donate by just coming by and dropping food off when they see it's getting low. And as people need, um, no questions asked, they just come pick out what they need. That's just kind of how it works. Someone takes something and then someone else might leave something. So it's kind of like an infinite loop of it, you know? Hopefully the need isn't infinite, but certainly the human spirit that was involved. It feels like our hard work had a reward. A relief. Yeah, no more sanding. <laughs> That's right, no more sanding. Although I will say they did a very good job on the sanding. By the way, to get the initial uh, amount of food, they had a food drive and they got a great response from that. But the troop leader told me today when they came out and they opened this and checked, they had even more. It's been here one day. They put this in last night. So in one day, it's already getting a great response of people dropping off food. And uh, they just hope that it's going to do a ton of good. Troop 76580. Kim, back to you. Very good. So, Jason, what happens once school starts? Interesting. Yeah, you know, they kind of turn over the control of that to the student council here at Ojibwe Elementary, and they take it over, and they keep an eye, and they kind of run the show after that. So it, it's great. Kids get all sorts of experience from this. Yeah. Back to you. That is really great. Okay, Jason, thank you.